Already seeing the support draw of Fnatic up. They will go into the Brewmaster. I believe that is probably going to be a Pos5 Brewmaster, but it is yet to be seen. I suppose Mizu could play it in the offlane as well. Uh, so a bit of flex coming out here for GXR makes enough sense. See, the Brewmaster been very, very popular in the current meta, especially with the new Aghanim Scepter changes. Though I suppose I said it's going to be a support brew, but you do have that offlane Brewmaster Shadow Demon combination now. So it, it could be quite potent going into that offlane for GXR to just run that offlane duo. Yeah, it can really build up and you can just kind of be aggressive there. Um, I guess the Abaddon's there to stop the Cinder Brew, but the Shadow Poison can still stack up. So you can uh, kind of play around that. I, I apologize. I, my dog is actually barking right next to my window, so I'm not sure if it's being blocked out. But it, uh, it, it's it right, happens don't, sometimes. Don't, still, don't worry. It's um, just the grand final, John. Don't, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Uh, the Abaddon, again, can take out the Cinder Brew, so it's not as bad with the Ignite. But the Shadow Poison stacks will still matter. So you can still kind of harass out in that lane if you want to go that route. Um, and it can still be impactful. Fnatic do go into the Brood. And this is where things can be a bit back and forth. Galaxy Racer have some wave clear on hand. Breed fires there. Shadow Poison stacks. To a certain extent, the Cinder Brew and the Clap can kind of clear out those uh, Spiderlings as well. But you don't have to worry about stuff like the Grimstroke. Stuff like the LC with the overwhelming odds. Uh, stuff like the Dark Seer was banned out too, so you're not going to be able to just run down the Spider Links. There's always going to be impact coming from the offlane here. Fnatic, that does look like our death hero on the offlane. You could maybe flex it mid, but it does just such a great job in the off that you should be able to apply that pressure onto the Medusa now. Yeah, absolutely. Can kind of work the other way as well. Like the Medusa might be able to clear out some of those Spider Links and just kind of escalate and farm, but. Yeah, Fnatic, they are certainly trying to finish this game quickly. I, I don't think they want to drag this game out against GXR's draft. Uh, and I can't really see them going for another position one here on Fnatic that, that will want to play the late game. I, I'd say they will probably go for something very, very early here to, to try and maximize uh, the draft they have got going. Question is, what are they going to pick here for Fnatic? Like, are we seeing a mid lash rack popping out? Could it possibly be a safe lane lash rack? Do you think the Broodmother is going to be in the off lane? For now, it seems like GXR, I mean, they ban out the Axe, which I would assume it would be a POS1 Axe for Fnatic. So it seems like GXR think that Fnatic are still looking for a position 1 for Raven. There are a couple of options in the POS1 that can play fast. Nature's Prophet could still slide in for Fnatic, plays in with a push as well. And GXR do actually flex ban. They ban out that TA as well, just to prevent that big wind condition in mid. We've seen, we've seen that Tricor before of Lesh Rack, Brood, and TA, and can build up really fast with a space Lesh and Brood Mother can buy out. So it's a safe ban for GXR. Fnatic, they don't have last pick. They will have to show their hand first. So this should give GXR some leeway to react. They've got a lot of reserve to play with oh, as well. Oh, there it is. They go down the Viper route. Another form of break. So much magic damage and. Again, that they just want to run a very, very quick style draft. 20 minutes in, you can get the shards up on the Viper. That's going to help you push a lot faster along with the Diabolic Edict to boot. I think it's a really nice draft from Fnatic. But you know if it goes past that 25, 30 minute mark, there's probably going to be some issues here with this draft. It does look like it will fall off very quickly if they don't at least get a Rax or two up before In Your Dreams ready on this Medusa. Yeah, I think the... Key thing is that GXR might have to consider BKBs at least, but once you have that, like the damage just gone. GXR they do close out with a puck, so there's still some flexibility with a puck support DK mid, but they do go yeah puck mid. They will go with a Brewmaster support here, Mizu in that offlane DK, and Fnatic uh, safe lane Viper mid Lesh. So they will have the Viper versus DK lane. No, the Viper versus uh yeah DK lane, and that should shape up pretty good for Raven. He should just be able to farm up build up what he wants. The Puck versus Leshrac lane is a lot more even, although we have seen the Leshrac kind of uh, take control in that lane as well. And it goes back to what you said. Fnatic's got some really early timings here. They've got to play very quickly. If they can, by the 25-minute mark, start ripping into tier trees, it can be hard for GXR to defend out and kind of hit their spikes. In your dream, needs time to cuck up, needs time to build into his items you can sort of play quick with the DK Puck and the Brewmaster support once you do get levels up, but it is harder up against the early spikes of Fnatic here. 
Okay, fair enough. We are going to move into it very, very soon. Game one. And yes, John, I, I can hear the dog right outside your window. It's a uh, perfect, perfect timing as usual. But it's, it's fine. It sounds like the dog's having a good time, which is all that matters, I suppose. They do like to bark. I've, I've learned myself as a, as a dog owner. They, they do enjoy barking quite a bit. Uh, we're not into the game one yet, John, but I'll ask you the hard question. Fnatic GXR, which draft do you think you prefer here in this game one? I'd prefer Fnatic's. I think it's okay. easier to pull these early win conditions when you have so many of them. With the Lush Rack, with the Brood, with the Viper. You've got the Abaddon to kind of protect you from the control coming in from GXR. They don't have really the best hold, like sure, Dream Coil and Dragon Tail. That's it. Disruption's there as well, uh, but you need to follow up after, and the Abaddon kind of handles that by himself. I think the issue for GXR in terms of facing against this early rush from Fnatic is their cooldowns. Uh, Dragon form is pretty long, Dream Coil not so much, but their pause 5 cooldown and the Brewmaster split is super long. So when the Brew doesn't have that split, GXR, it doesn't feel like they can take that 4v5. And even if you take those 4v5, it's all, it already kind of feels disadvantageous with the numbers and the power Fnatic will have early. So I think Fnatic just needs to play that quick pace. If we see them perform as we did in the last series, they should be able to overwhelm GXR's draft early and just not leave room for growth. Well, we're, fra we, uh, we're straight into it. Chuan, oh, already going to get the uh, the tips going. Dots out as well. He's not too happy about it. But I guess these two are friends anyway, just giving crap to each other. <laughs> nice to see. Odds for Lupet, John, 187 to 187. So another very even start in terms of the odds. Uh, no team really being favored here in this uh, this first game of this best of five grand final. Though they do generally change as the games do go on. So I, I imagine there will be changes after this first game. Uh, for now, though, very even. I mean, it did end up even as well. Like the group stage, Fnatic took it, I believe, 2-0. And then the upper bracket playoffs, GXR took it 2-0. So it's rather even historically in how these teams face up. And it's just going to be down to how they adapt into this one. And they already got the D ward here on Fnatic's end. They're just going to deny the obs. It becomes fairly <laughs> obvious. So no side going to have that mid vision. But at the least, you have that bonus gold start for jabs. Gets the value from the sentry, so you don't feel too bad. Doesn't look like we'll see a big scuffle over these runes. So stable start for both sides. It certainly is. Nice little block there on the the small camp for Alacrity as well. Going to make him lose one of the uh, one of the camps at least. And Chuen, of course, he, he wants the best start he can possibly get on this slash track. Like, it's very important that Chuen has an extremely good start. And he doesn't kind of get bogged down here by Alacrity on the puck. And speaking of that mid lane, we are here with Chuen on the Lesh Rack against Alacrity on that puck. It feels like it should be a fairly even matchup. Kind of hard to catch out the puck, especially when once phase shift is up. Suppose you can expect some supports to rotate over to try and help out. Like we might see a rotation from our Hoodwink on the side of Fnatic. But overall, I think Alacrity should be just fine. Yeah, it should hold steady as a farming lane. The Lush Rack does have better wave clear spells with the Split Earth and Lightning Storm spam compared to the Orb. I think overall, Chuen should be able to handle lane better. You just have to be cautious about Alacrity diving deep. If he does commit, he can kind of right click you down. The good thing for the Lush is you do have more armor. So the Puck doesn't really want to sustain the right click trade for too long. And that should give Chuen a lot more room to farm up. Still going to take some levels until anything spicy happens here and should, should be fairly even in terms of a farm trade. Well, up at top lane as well, in your dream there with Polis and against Jabs and Death. So you talked about this lane a little bit during the draft, but the, uh, the Broodmother, at least for now, Death's going to have a decent enough time. I don't see in your dream really dying unless you've got the level 6 up on Death. And even then, he should still be able to be just fine. But I suppose as long as they can control the CS of In Your Dream, they're going to be more than happy with it. Yeah, and your goal here, here is really to just prevent the Dusa from farming too much up. And Dusa plus Brewmaster as a lane, it can be aggressive. You can try to play around with the Cinder Brew, Ignite with the Mystic Snake, and kind of try to play with that slow. But for the most part, you will look to just secure farm. And as long as Det gets his levels, eventually he'll, he'll have six. He can overwhelm. The Medusa with a spiraling sound line. The Silken Bolo here has a ton of value. The Mischance just makes it hard for In Your Dream to focus on that farm. Yeah, certainly does. Polison gonna get caught by the Bushwhack. A lot of damage out from Jabs. Polison, he's gonna be okay. 
It's that last lane we haven't really talked about yet either. Joe Cam there on the Shadow Demon along with Mizu. You're going to have DJ on the Abaddon and Raven on that POS1 Viper. Raven, he should dominate this lane. I mean, maybe you don't expect to get a kill onto Mizu or Joe Cam. Maybe you're not able to really catch them out. But they're not going to be able to slow you down either on this Viper. No, I mean, DJ's doing a great job of putting his body forward, cutting off Joe Cam from looking for the Shadow Poison stacks to build up. So Raven's just really free to farm. Mizu is about half of the CS after this wave is gone and just going to slow down the pace of the DK into the level 6, into the blink timing. And it's just a matchup that I think GXR was kind of willing to give away. It's just not a lane the DK can play all too well, whether it be on safe or mid. DJ just making sure that Joe Cam doesn't get a very comfortable pull-off. He will eventually get there, however. Not too big of a deal here for Joe Cam. Bit more rotation from DJ. He's actually going to swipe the bounty rune away from Alacrity. So it's a nice little value play from our POS 5. His top lane, Death. Very fire out. It's probably not going to be enough as In Your Dream does secure the first blood. Polison abusing the Cinderbrew and Thunderclap slow. And they had barely enough damage on this Medusa to allow the bonus goal to go in your dream's way. Yeah, that's a great way to start it for GXR. And ooh. Yeah, bottom lane. Joe Cam does eventually end up dropping as DJ. Able to secure the kill there with the Miscoil. Of course, you are up against an Abaddon Viper lane. So it is expected that eventually somebody's going to die on the side of GXR. But I'm, I'm sure they're very happy with the fact that they just secured first blood on the pause 3 of Fnatic. Yeah, it feels a lot better for GXR finding that first blood. Um, it goes back to all the slows on that lane. They've got three slows. Thunderclap, Cinderbrew, and the Snake. Raven being dive, but uh, Mizu. Raven's going to turn around now. Mizu has the brown boots up. Is going to be able to get away. Raven gets a second shot in. It's uh, not going to be quite enough, though, to, to really do much damage to the Dragon Knight. Joe Cam going to salve him up anyway. Give Mizu a bit of a reset. So one to one, four and a half minutes in. Things are going decently for both sides. I mean, back to that mid lane as well. You've got Chuen there against Alacrity, and it's still a very, very even matchup. 25 to 23 in terms of CS. I'd say both sides should still be pretty satisfied, especially for Fnatic, because you want Chuen to just secure that initial farm so he can start escalating across the map. You won't be worried too much about Alacrity's farm, I don't think. No, you, you're not really too worried about the pacing of the puck. You just want to hit your own spikes. You want to just sit in the lane, get your levels in the Diabolic Edict up to pressure the tower, especially if Alacrity will look for a side lane rotation with the first Dream Coil. So that's the one thing you have to be cautious about the puck. Sure, you want some early activity here, but the moment you leave the lane, your tower is going to cop a ton of damage. And you're going to have to rotate back to stop that anyway. So it, it might just keep Alacrity in check. And if you can't get a side lane rotation, you can't really relieve some of that pressure coming out here on GXR. And, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to buy too much space out for your Medusa. You're not be able to set up for Mizu to kind of build up on the DK. And overall, that could just play into Radiance what Fnatic wants anyway. That it could. Yeah, still level 4 here on this Broodmother. In your dream, going to be out leveling by 1. So again, uh, the safe lane going quite smoothly here for GXR. And Death's not too far behind, but you definitely want to have the advantage of that Brood as mid lane now. Coil is out there. They've actually got Chuen there on that Leshrac. He'll try to turn back in on Polison, but Polison's going to be fine. In fact, now Alacrity, he's the one in trouble. Jabs, he will save the day with the Bushwhack. And Chuen is going to be able to walk away with his life intact and a kill stronger. Yeah, just great plays coming out from Fnatic. Great hold from Jabs to line it up on the puck. And it, it's back to that play. As a puck, you do want to make some deep dives. You want him to look for some aggression with the Dream Coil. If it doesn't pan out, you start to feel like you're going to maybe be pressured to look for more. You're going to need to look in other lanes to look for kill opportunities. The Leshrac now, level 7 up. Chu Wen can start to think about just shoving in Wave and looking for the Edict play. Just melt a tier 1 tower, buy the space out, and force the map open a little bit more. Bottom lane, Raven. He's actually being chased right now by Mizu and Joe Cam, and they've got a lot of damage out. But Jabs again is going to be there to kind of save the day with the Bushwhack as Joe Cam will keep the vision up, and Mizu will be able to get the Breathe Fire in time. Jabs and DJ... 
try for a chase onto Joe Cam. They've got a bushwhack, but there's no trees around. They'll wait till Joe Cam gets a little bit closer, and there you go. They get the bushwhack off with the acorn shot, and eventually they will be able to get a two for one trade. But it does cost them that pause one Viper. Yeah, it's a bit of a painful trade. You you still take what you can get, and overall that does feel pretty good for Fnatic, but you are slowing down your Viper. Not that the Viper needs too much to get started. He, he's already at the point with level 6 that it's hard to zone him out. Same thing goes up top. Death has level 6 up, Soul Ring up, so the Spiderling, spam is, Spiderling spam is in, and you can just shove in a wave now as well. So you've got two sources of push, Leshrac ready, the Broodmother ready, and you can see just how far they're pushed away. Paulson's just trying to run now. Yeah, you have to TP out. When that Brood's got you with the Silken Bowler, you've got no choice but to TP, unless you can fight back, but in most cases, you just can't. He will just leave the area. Shuen. Start moving in. He's almost got his Hood of Defiance up now on that Leshrac. So he's he's sitting quite pretty. He's going for a bit more of a defensive build. Understanding they are still looking for that mid-game spike. They want to be as strong as possible in that mid-game. He should have it up in just about 30 seconds. Because now they'll move up towards the top tier 1 tower. And with Death there on the Broodmother, it's not going to be hard anyway. But Chuen is going to come in to help out. Just make it that much faster. And this will allow now Fnatic to really start to take over this dire jungle. Which is exactly what you want to do as a broodmother anyway. Yeah, you're going to be able to cut off the farm source for a lot of the heroes on GXR. And your dream's not going to be very comfy here. We'll have to dip into the triangle. DJ is kind of cutting them off though. Yeah, but DJ might be in a bit spot of danger himself. He has borrowed time up. Death, he's going to rejoin. Polison, Silken Bowler is going to be out. And now the Bushwhack, it'll lock him down. They do get that Brewmaster. No problems here for Fnatic as they are now 5-2. and 2, 2k net worth lead. The way of this Radiant side. Again though, this is to be expected with their draft. You do expect them to get an early advantage. So it looks like they've even gone bot lane now onto Mizu. He's going to try for the TP play. They have so much magic damage though. That it's not going to be enough. They'll take him out. Yeah. Just lining up for all the kills. I think what Fnatic needs is that mid-tier one to fall soon, and at least Chu Wen is keeping the pressure up, and we have some flanks here. Well, they're going to the Brood. Coil has been committed, but he is still surviving as DJ is there on the Abaddon to keep him alive. Now Chu Wen, he's going to move in onto Alacrity. Face shift. Oh, it's going to be pump faked in the split up. It still lands from Chu Wen. Alacrity moving in as well. He will die. Joe Cam's gone. Oh, that's a very nice pump fake there from Chu Wen. Lacrity, he tried to orb away, realizing what happened, but he couldn't orb away in time. Yeah, that's a heads up play from Chuen, just knowing that he should expect the orb. The orb was short uh, just because of the timing, right? Like he saw the split earth being casted, so he had to make a choice. Does he just stand there and wait for the orb? Does he just orb out and hope to dodge? And it was just something nearly impossible to make the choice on. Now, Paulson? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the idea was there from Paulson. He's just going to drop. Just got a Cinderbrew off and they just ran him oh. down. Now in your in dream, dream, that's the big target they want. Chuen, he's feeling confident in your dream. Already very low on mana. In fact, now he's all out of it. Joe Cam going to try and help out, but the dives are well and truly going in. Chuen is there. Joe Cam, he's going to drop the sharpshooter in your dream. He's going to be within vision now and it oh. will connect from jabs. Perfect, perfect positioning. So they've got the Medusa. They've got the Viper around and Raven. He'll be there to help out. It's fanatic. 11 to 2, but a 5k net worth advantage. And a scan out on Mizu, but they don't have the bushwhack. Man, it's it's just shaping up. The aggression we talked about is coming online from Fnatic, and the fact that they're finding in your dream is the big issue here for GXR. I think you can afford to sacrifice your Dragonite. To a certain extent, you can afford to sacrifice your Puck, but you cannot afford to have in your dream get too pressured here and he's he's still lagging severely behind and farm despite that good laning start still needs tons of room to hit those spikes oh, on nice the juice and just look at this yeah joe cam that's a great sharpshooter there from jabs to slow him down and death he could get in range jabs gives death the tip but i think jabs deserves the tip <laughs> for sure like he's just lining up the shots he's been so aggressive on this hoodwink and that's something we've seen from Jabs throughout the day. In the last series as well, he was very on point with where he was on the map. 
with his movement, with his control. And this is just Fnatic looking at their best. GXR, I mean, they're trying to split up now. You can see the, their position on the map. They're playing in the top jungle within your dream. The triangle was taken over a bit by Alacrity. And the top lane's being shoved in by Mizu. All they can do is avoid Fnatic. They will drop objectives while, he, while they do that, so their map will shrink. Tier 2 bot going to melt very quickly with a Leshrac on hand. And uh, Fnatic uh, might actually look for the high ground this early on. My goodness, 12 and a half minutes in. They're going to force a high ground. I said 20, 25 minutes, Sean. I didn't mean 12 minutes. Fnatic, I'm not sure <laughs> if they misheard me. They're rushing in. Polison. he just got level 6, the poor guy. He's, he's finally got the primal split up. Fnatic, they are going to pack. I think all they wanted is to get some chip damage off and to, to force the rotations. And they will get four heroes rotating in your dream. He won't fall for it. He will stick around and just keep farming up that dire jungle. But my god, he's got a long way to go before he can start helping out his team in, in trying to defend these objectives. Yeah, it's such a slow build up. Dragon Lance up. I'm going for the man to build up for some, some self dispel on hand, which will be helpful. It just means you have so much more to farm. You said chip damage a while ago on that tier 3. It's down to less than half HP. So I, I'd say that's more than chip. Significant damage done by Fnatic. And the next time they commit, that could melt. They do smoke up here. It is only DJ and Jabs in that smoke. They're using Death's Bait. They don't have the other cores on hand to help, though. Mizu is kind of alone right now. No TP available, and he's gone. Once that Viper Strike connects, he is guaranteed to die. Zalakrity, he's trying to split push the mid lane, but he's out of spells as well. He will be able to blink out. Jab's still kind of terrorizing him by chasing him down. They even glyph the creep wave. Being so annoying towards his puck as... Oh, that's oh, a great play, what? Jabs! Oh, he used the Ironwood Tree. The pump fakes coming out again and again from Fnatic. It wasn't enough. He didn't have the help around, but a very nice cheeky kind of play there from Jabs. Yeah, that, that's great. And that still holds back Alacrity, I and mean, he's still farming up. He's actually keeping pace here quite well within Turkey Gold of Chuen. Issue is the high ground comes again. Look, it's gone. <laughs> like half HP a while ago, half HP now equals zero. How, how many games have been speedrun recently, John? I mean, Fnatic, they've joined in now with the speedruns. As they do get rid of all the spinalings, Raven's going to get stunned up. Apulsa's going to back Chuen. He will just melt the Brulings. With this Lash Rack at level 12, with a double damage rune active, you do not want to run into him at the moment. And they are one tier 3 tower up. That means one team fight away from being able to go for that bottom racks. And they might return very soon with the way this game's going. Well, at the very least, Joe Cam's doing a great job of cutting off the creep wave. So he just spams out the shadow poison, clearing out the entire wave by himself. That will force a response, or at least a slower push out from Fnatic and GXR are trying to stall out. I mean, while they force these fights, In Your Dream is still solo farming the top jungle for the most part. Still working towards the Yasha into Manta, still a ways off. They have to be careful though. Nice clear on the Spiderlings, but I don't think that's going to help too much because Chuen's the, the main guy that's getting rid of this tower. The Diabolic Edict at max level is just so much physical damage. Paulson, he's going to throw a Cinder Brew out, but that's about all he can do. The tier 2 mid tower is going to drop extremely quick. You've got to ask yourself as Fnatic, do you want to try for a Roshan? Do you want to go for that bot Rax? It seems like Fnatic are going high ground again. Yeah. Why not? Like, they've still got the damage on the Lesh. There's no, no new items to really stop this. Split Earth will land on In Your Dream. That'll be enough. They see the Medusa has rotated back into the base. That's going to be enough information for them to just back out. Just control the map and just slow down the farm of the Medusa. And again, you've always got Roshan to go back to. And with the Leshrac, it's not really that difficult. Definitely not. I, I'm really keen to see this from Chuen as well. Look at his build, right? Like, he didn't skill the second level in Pulse Nova. He actually went two points in stats. So he's just going for the value play, early stats up to tank up, get more mana. It has been impactful. I'm wondering how far will he go with the stats? He goes again! So three levels in stats. We expected that in the dryer. It's coming on the lash. <laughs> I mean, why, why not? It's working, right? Like, they, they need the stats right here, right now. They don't need them later. His orb, Alacrity, does blink towards the north. Bot lane is being forced in again. Death with the Spiderlings is moving in. 
Raven around him as well. Because you'd love it to be the 20 minute mark right now if you're Raven. So you could just buy out the shards. But hell, they don't really need it. The Brulings are going to fly out from Paulson now. And Fnatic, they are immediately just going to try and back. They'll make sure DJ st stays protected, however. And that they will. DJ, he'll walk out. No problem. It's Raven, he wants to get some more damage off onto that Rax. And poor old In Your Dream, Dragonlance Yasha up. It's all he has to defend with. The Raven's even finding bounty runes in front of him right now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just uh, rubbing salt in the wound, getting the shovel out mid-fight, and getting the bounty as well. Like, you, you, you get it all here in Fnatic. And the push just goes again. Like, what do you do? You just don't have damage. Yeah, I, I don't know what you do, John. Chuen, Diabolic Edict is going to wear out. He'll have to wait for the next one, but they've got the right-click damage now. Because you've got buybacks on Chihexar, but you don't really want to commit them. It looks like Alacrity, though. He is creep skipping. So no creeps available for Fnatic. They can't keep this push going. They will eventually back off. They do force out the Glyph. They just need a creep wave to keep it up. And Alacrity, he is really making sure that there is no creep wave coming just in case they wanted to keep trying. Yeah, heads up play from him on the puck, stalling this game out as long as possible. And because they focused most of their damage on the melee, Rax, of course, it can heal up. Smoke play here from GXR. They've got a BKB on Mizu. Perhaps with a DK frontlining, they can actually get some damage done. Well, any kill they can get right now is going to be super value. Raven, oh, death. Mizu reveals himself, doesn't go for the stun. Instead, Alacrity does jump in for the orb, but that's about it. Not 100% confident in their ability to take them down. They do leave them be. And that's going to be in that top tier 2 tower is going to be targeted now from Fnatic. Still equally fast from Chuen. They really can't defend us. Outside towers just don't make sense anymore for GXR at this point in the game. So all they can do is just keep trying to farm, keep trying to build up. And now it's high ground again. Just just another lane. They just run back in. And why the hell not? You've got a creep wave this time. Alacrity going to get oh. started. Dagon out. They've got jabs. Split Earth, however, in your dream. He's already losing his mana pool. He'll try to walk out with the stone gaze. Chuen going to be targeted. Mizu trying to get the damage out. But the dragon form is over now. It's Polison. It's going to move in with the primal split. Fnatic. I I'm not sure if they'll stick around without jabs. And it looks like they've seen enough. Then again, Primal Split is about to wear off. Stone Gaze, Dream Coil, all of it was committed to try and defend high ground. But Fnatic, they're not going to try and force the issue. They are indeed going to back. They just play it safe. Look at that. DD on the top. Rune spot as well. So if they had a core actually spotted out, and they do, pinks are out. They could go Roche now. <laughs> that, so it was once in the first game, once in the second game. Now here as well in game one of the finals. Literally every game has a Roche. Uh, DD into Roche timing, but looks like Fnatic probably don't feel like they need Roche. They just want to keep pushing while they're strong. I mean, absolutely. They may feel like it, it's detrimental to even waste the time. It's Alacrity again, immediately with the creep skipping. Understands as long as this bot lane's pushed out, they can't go for the racks. Jabs, however, nice bushwhack gonna catch him, but nobody's there to help Jabs kill off Alacrity. And Alacrity, he, he's just not going to take it. He'll take another creep wave. They have one siege creep. That's all they have. One siege creep. Moving its way through the bot lane. Let's see how effective they can <laughs> they can use this. I mean, they've already got the Ag Shard up on Raven, so he's just melting these objectives as well with everyone else. And that might be enough, actually. Yeah, turns out it is. There goes your pot racks. Oh One siege creep will do it, John. That's all you need. Though even a photic shoulder, just make sure it lasts a bit longer. This Misu, he's gonna jump in onto the last rack. Chuen, he's gonna be fine as a nice sharpshooter. Or rather, Bushwhack was there on Alacrity. Misu, there's your sharpshooter out. It does connect onto the Dragon Knight, but Chuen, he's been caught. Bloodstone has been activated. He's still healthy. He might just make it. The Stone Gaze not freezing him up. No, he's fine. Chuen is out. They can't kill the last rack off. And he can reset now as Paulson is going to die. And you've got DJ just spamming out the miscoils, coils. Making sure Chuen does reset. And with the Bloodstone, it's not going to take long either. They're going back in. Yeah, there's there's just not much Alacra can do here. In your dream, he does have a Maelstrom. 
for some good damage. It's just not enough. Another tier 3 tower down. How do you defend this? I mean, you can hit them as much as you God. want, but this draft from Fnatic, it's it's proving to be a little bit too strong at this timing. Split Earth, it won't land. It does zone out in your dream for a little bit, allowing Raven to get more stacks of that poison onto that melee barracks. And it looks like they might just have it as Chuen Chw is there again. They've got the melee barracks. That's all they wanted. Chuen trying to back off. Mizu is there with the stun. The heals are not able to come out as DJ. He's in the cyclone. So they got a massive target. Can they find more? DJ, he does get banished by Joe Cam. They'll hold him down. They'll get a secondary kill for sure. As now they try it onto Raven. He'll BKB and just TP away. And so they got two heroes down, John, but they're down two racks. It's a very difficult situation now for GXR. Well, I think the beauty of GXR's lineup is that they can actually clear out the creep waves really well with a Puck and the Medusa, even the DK to a certain extent. So just having one lane of super creeps doesn't feel too bad. It will cut your farm source off a bit. They did try to commit for Roshan, but they realized they kind of fall flat with damage. And, well, death is still alive, so the broodling, uh, the spider links are still an issue in the split push, and they have to respond. This is going to give enough time for Fnatic to get their response on, and they could look for the Roshan as well. The last fight was a pretty big swing in gold, though, for GXR. I believe it was almost 1.4k gold airway, and that does give them something to play with. I and mean, you can look at Alacrity in that word. He is still up there. Within the top three, top two, tied in with Chuen and Raven. So the puck is still shaping up well, it's still scaling. Is going all in on the Dagon build. So they just kind of want to fight back against this early draft by having burst damage of their own. We'll see if it does pay off. Oh no. Yeah, nice Glimmer Cape usage into the bushwhack and Chuen will take the kill. And you were just talking about how, how much of a good game Alacrity has still been having. But now, 45 seconds without buyback. Fnatic, they might try to rush the base again. Or they might try Roshan and Raven. Would you believe it, John? He's got a double damage rune. Another one. Not the same one. Yep. Another one. Yep. Another one. Always. Always. Every time into the Roshan. You have to appreciate. There's, there's really something about. Maybe it's the ticket we have. If, you know, it gets coded <laughs> with loot bet. And they're like, right? That means DD into Roshan every time. That's just unbelievable. It was even. In, it's always in front of the Roshan pit as well. It's not yeah. even at the. It's not even at the bot spot. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah, it just gives you so much easy. Easy first Roshan coming out for Fnatic. They have the Aegis on hand, and they can just start to really rip apart on the high ground. GXR, these farm spikes we're looking for still aren't lining up. IYD. Again, he's doing a good job of just holding the high ground defense, being that big tower for the team, trying to clear out the creep waves. Once the numbers are up, you just can't hold out. Twin gets Joe Camp just by himself. Just creeps up on him. Does get the kill. Immediately smokes up. Twin, what's your plan here? It looks like he wants to try and go through the dire base towards that top lane and... He's moving in. They can't see him. He's still smoking. Now in your dream, he gets caught by the bushwhack. He's alone. And oh, look how God. fast he dies. Oh, my goodness. It's not even close. He'll buy it back. But now the tier 3 top tower. It's going to be under siege. Fnatic, they're still very healthy. They could just keep this up. I mean, you've still got the Aegis available. But it does seem like Chuen, he wants the reset. He was a bit low on mana. And he'll just run his way back with those boots of travel. It won't take that long. Yeah, he's just able to join these fights really quickly with an early pickup. They are still, they're still holding on GXR, but they're two racks down. Mid, mid range racks was taken out there by Chu Wen while the fight was breaking up top. And it's just so much more GXR has to push back against. Mind you, the Puck and Dusa can still sort of manage it. But you're really not gaining enough gold now to keep up. Like the gap is growing 11k for Fnatic. And as mentioned, Age is still up. They could just go. They're going to jump in. Big Dream Coil. Jabs immediately blown up by Alacrity. Meanwhile, Chuen, right in the middle of all this, is taking a fair bit of damage. But he'll tank through it. He'll turn around. A nice split Earth oh, is going to make sure that Mizu is probably going to drop. They'll try to save him with the disruption. It's not going to be enough. Or maybe it is. The BKB is there. He'll still just try and kite around. Raven, though, going after the big target. He'll go after In Your Dream. Is that Tier 3 tower is once again susceptible here to Fnatic. That Diabolic Edict just going to shred through it. That top racks. How do you stop this? They're trying. 
Dagon on the backside almost gets jabs again, but he will survive. DJ, he'll heal him up with the Mist Coils. That top rack's again still going down as Death, he's back in. Cinderbrew's flying out. They'll pop it. Primal split out as well from Polis and they'll try to chase Chuen, but can they kill him with the Aphonic Shield down? They're not going to have the damage. Chuen just turn around again onto oh Mizu. No BKB available this time around on that Dragon Knight. He'll try to run, but the Pulse Nova's going. They got the melee barracks anyway onto the range. No, they call it GG well played Fnatic they've made it work Ooh. at exactly the right timing John we talked about it 30 minutes past you would have started to see problems here for Fnatic but they make it work at the 27 and a half minute mark and in your dream he will give the respect tip over to Chuen who I've got to say played this Lesh rack perfectly they hit all their spikes here on Fnatic's and they just had such an aggressive start they managed to build up and just run from there. I think the big difference here was in terms of supports, really there's not much Paulson could have done to stabilize the lanes or even get a rotation out. And when you have a Shadow Demon support, you want your uh, follow-up support to have some sort of stun. You don't want to rely too much in the course to have to make those rotations work. And there's just not much Paulson could do until he hit his six. So there's spikes in the supports, which should set up for the rest of the course. We're a lot slower from GXR, Fnatic, I and mean, they didn't need much on the Abaddon and the Hoodwink. The Hoodwink alone could just set the stuns. Abaddon just needs to heal people up. And with this kind of lineup, that's literally all you needed. Just some HP to sustain the push. Came out from Fnatic. 18 to 6, 27 minutes in. Very fast first set of racks from Fnatic. They did slow down a bit afterwards, respecting GXR's power. But they eventually clean up in quick fashion. We'll have to see what GXR pulls out. And I've seen chat. They've they've been requesting me to they've been requesting us to call in your dream Kamisama. Kamisama needs to I don't know needs to be set up more. It's not on him. Right? He had Dusa into a very quick draft. He first phased Dusa. I think up against Fnatic, they seem to know what to do against those late game heroes now. We'll have to move into a quick a quick 10 minute break, but right after that 10 minute break, we're going to be back with game two's draft of this best of five grand final between Fnatic and Galaxy Racer Esports.